Each year, over 100 infants in Canada are afflicted with a condition called craniosynostosis. The soft bones of the skull prematurely fuse, resulting in visible facial deformities, such as centerline bulging or frontal asymmetry. Left untreated, there are very serious medical risks for the child, including visual impairment and stunted mental development. To correct this condition, patients undergo a form of surgery called cranial vault remodeling. The surgeon removes a piece of the skull, often as small as 10 centimeters wide, and cuts it in several places, reshaping it into a suitable curve. Recently, SickKids has pioneered a new technique of machining a metal template uh, based on the patient's CT scan. The template serves as a guide for the surgeon during the reshaping process. Ideally, we would want the reshaped pieces to match the template as closely as possible. So the question remains, where do we cut the skull? Mathematical optimization is the selection of a best choice from a set of possible solutions to a problem. Given the patient's CT scan, such as this asymmetric curve here, and the ideal skull template, such as this smoother curve which we see below it, we developed an optimization model that would determine where to cut the skull in order to minimize the difference between the ideal skull and the deformed skull after it had been cut and reshaped. Because of the high complexity of the problem, brute force search methods took way too long to be practical, even when we used very powerful computers. Because of this, we used optimization techniques called integer programming and dynamic programming to divide and conquer the overall problem into smaller subproblems that we could solve efficiently and reuse during our algorithm's execution. We studied the characteristics of good solutions and used the problem's nested nature to discard large sets of poor solutions on the fly. The result was that our runtime went from days to seconds, even after we doubled the number of cuts and increased the resolution of the skull by a factor of four. The feedback from sick kids has been very positive. The lead cranial facial surgeon has expressed how well our cut instructions match the intuition he's developed through years of experience. Our instructions will not only help reduce surgery time, they will aid in the training of new surgeons. Our next step would be to develop a 3D model, which we would like to feed to a robot. This robot would laser etch guidelines onto the skull piece itself, providing a visual set of instructions for the surgeon. Someday, I hope our methods help improve the lives of children all around the world, starting right here in Ontario. Thank you.